Hello everyone. Well, uh, myself Shivendra Kumar and uh, welcome to history classes and obviously what I will be dealing right now will be prehistory, the first chapter that we study in our history syllabus. Now when we talk about uh, prehistory, the first thing that comes in our mind is what do we mean by prehistory? What is prehistory? Now prehistory is a term which has been given on the basis of the development of script. Now on the basis of development of script if when we say now the period when the script has not developed that means the period when the people don't know how to write. So when the people don't know how to write, when writing has not developed, when we study about that period, that period has been termed as prehistory. And this is the opening phase of our syllabus. As the first we venture into our syllabus with this very chapter. Now when we talk about prehistory, prehistory normally resembles tools. Now one question that comes in mind that uh, why tools have been taken as we don't have any inscription, we don't have any written or evidence. So there only one thing was required for the historical source and that source was obviously your tools because what do what does the tool resembles? The tools resemble the human scientific development of mentality of the people. It resembles the development, the mental development of the people. And that's why we see that in the different phases, the, there is a certain evolution of the tools. One more very interesting thing is there which most of the book often doesn't talk about. And that is basically the human evolution is also, you know, attached with the tools evolution. Now, how I say this, just take this cause. Now, how humans have evolved? Now, as we know, due to certain genetic mutation, there was basically formation of hominid. From hominid, the humans evolve. And after hominid, the first race that came, that was Ramapithecus. Now Ramapithecus further developed and it gave to birth to another one which is called Australopithecus. Now up to Australopithecus it further developed and we developed into Homo habilis. Now why I am writing this because this is the human evolution and here the homo habilis has been termed as the tool man. Now the people, people of India, the people of the world started making tool for the first time and that was by homo habilis who were called referred as tool making. So the tool making has started well before the advent of the human race. So modern human sapiens, we are called the modern human sapiens, right? So homo sapiens, we use the zoological term as such. So we homo sapiens have developed far, you know, far further than the evolution of homo habilis. Now they started making tool for the first time. Now homo habilis developed into homo erectus. And erectus after erectus, erectus was the period when the human started standing straight. It was for the first time, otherwise we were a bit of bending as such. Now what we have, what happened that we had started standing a form completely straight. Now after homo erectus, there was a development of Neanderthal. Neanderthal. 
and after neanderthal obviously we the modern man the homo sapiens came right so we can see that there has been a chain of evolution that has occurred before the formation of modern human being and before being the modern human from the right from the homo habilis stage we started making tools so our mental development started taking place from here now when we divide the period as such now we divide the period completely now we divide the period of prehistory completely into basically certain parts and the, those parts are basically first the stone age right so the first one is the stone age right so stone is is there and after stone is i will just erase this one right so after stone is we study about chalcolithic is right now the next one is chalcolithic is now after chalcolithic is what we study is basically megalith period so basically these three topics we need to study under the prehistory of india now as we know the first human originated or the evolution of the first human from the hominid took place where in africa at that point of time all the continents were together which is called pangaea now when all the continents were together that's why the migration of the people took place to the different part of the world whether in europe to asia and the other everyone has migrated from the center point the origin point was africa right now when the human started making tools we termed that the first thing that was used for making tools was the stone now as stone was found in plenty the people started making tools out of stones and that's why we have termed this era as the stone age now we will talk about stone age and obviously its basis in india now when we talk about the stone age the stone age has been divided into three periods now it has been termed as the paleolithic period the second one is called the mesolithic period and the third one obviously i need to clean it up a bit and the third one is the neolithic period now when we say paleolithic period now first we will go into the genesis of the words how these words have originated now when we see the term this is the greek word paleo paleo means prior or pre we can also say it's early so paleo is early or prior now lithic has been derived from the greek word lith and lith means stone 
This is why we often term Paleolithic as Old Stone Age or Early Stone Age. So, Paleo is old or early, right? So, let us write old as well here. So, you will not be confused in it, right? Now, so when we say Paleolithic, it means Old Stone Age or the Early Stone Age. Major word means middle. Again, lith means stone. So, Mesolithic means the middle stone is. When we talk about Neolithic, Neo means new. And this is new stone is. So, when we talk about the stone is, we basically study about the three phases of evolution that took place. The first one was the Paleolithic, which developed into Mesolithic and from Mesolithic, we ventured into Neolithic. Now, if we talk about the human fossil and the oldest human fossil has been found by H.D. Sonakia. And H.D. Sonakia found the oldest human specimen in India, Sonakia, yes, from Hathnora. This is a place in Madhya Pradesh, a village in Madhya Pradesh, in Narmada Valley. And that is why the earliest man, because often in your pre-examination, the question would be asked, Ki, what is the earliest specimen of uh, the human fossil in India called? And they are called the Narmada man. And it was founded by S.D. Sunakya from Hathnora in Madhya Pradesh in the year 1982. So, this is a uh, miscellaneous information because as I have talked about the evolution of humans. So, that is why we should also know. So, which was the earliest human specimen that has been found in India. Now, when we talk about this stone era, I will first of all, let us see how the stone era has evolved in India. India may kaise evolve hua stone era. Let us have a quick glimpse on that. Now, when we talk about the stone era, I will just focus first of all on Paleolithic because a lot many things are, need, are needed to be covered in Paleolithic. That is why we are covering it and we will obviously covering it in a great detail as such. Right. Now, let us start the Paleolithic era in India. Right. Now, there is a very interesting story. Before venturing uh, into the things, let us hear the story. How we come to know about the Paleolithic or the Stone Age in India. Now, we had a uh, archaeologist whose name was Robert Bruce Foote and Robert Bruce Foote was excavating at a site now named as Pallavaram near Madras, right? Now it is called Chennai at that point of time obviously that was known as Madras and he was excavating. Now while excavating at Pallavaram what he found was obviously there were he found and hand axe. Now, hand axe was do not, uh, uh, you know, do not take the hand axe as we have in the present time. Now, the structure of the hand axe was like this. You will quite be quite surprised how this structure was. It was like this. So, this shot of hand axe was found. You will say it is like a club, not a hand axe. Obviously, but hand axe, it is known as hand axe, it seems like a club, but it is not a club, it is a hand axe basically, right? It was founded by Robert Bruce Foote. By his founding, when we came to know, ki, okay, for the first time, that okay, even India have Paleolithic sites. That means even prehistory existed in India as well. 
and this is the reason why Robert Bruce Foote has been termed as the father of prehistoric archaeology in India and obviously after him the prehistory archaeology started the study of prehistory archaeology started and after one evidence after another we found that all the three phases of the stone era was present in India right now after him we further excavated at many places and found a lot many paleolithic sites as such so we when we excavated many sites what happened that we come to know that there were several types of culture existed existed during the paleolithic period now when we say there were different types of cultures that were existing at the at in paleolithic era that means what it means simply that ki in paleolithic one site has special tools other site has some other special tools that's why the cultural variation was there that's why we started naming it in, uh, we started giving the name of nomenclature of culture and as such when we go deep into the things we find three types of cultures right and a lot many other cultures at different point now what we divided what we did was we divided the paleolithic era into three parts and right we divided the paleolithic era into three three parts the first one is the lower paleolithic the second one is middle paleolithic and the third one obviously is the upper paleolithic now students basically what happens that a question comes in our mind so what is the base of such categorization why we have given such nomenclature like lower middle and upper now this is purely based on stratification stratification starikaran kehte hain isko right strata different strata now when we excavate right now this is the top most part and this is the lowest part now this will be the oldest one the lowest will be the oldest one this is why lower paleolithic right now above it will be the middle part right so this is this is lower this is middle and obviously when we talk about the third one this is obviously upper right so if we compare between the three strata this will be having the oldest specimen this will be having a middle phase uh, specimen and the upper will have the latest specimen regarding the paleolithic era so based on this stratification we have type class them into three categories right so i hope you would have understood what i mean when i say this now talking about the things let's proceed with the lower paleolithic age now when we talk about the lower paleolithic era right now in lower paleolithic era we have seen the development of three types of cultures here right the first we have already mentioned so we will start the first one from there itself and that is the first one is hand axe culture now hand axe culture obviously 
it is from it has been found from the place pallavaram madras and that was by robert bruce foot robert bruce foot right so he founded it so this culture where the hand axe dominated in the tools that were found from this place so this is given the terms hand axe culture we often called it madrasian culture right so madrasian culture or the hand axe culture is what we you know uh, call it this is our first one so obviously the name itself makes it very clear that the finding places will be around madras only right so this was the first type of culture now the second one was if we talk about the second one it was sohan valley culture now the word sohan sometime s o h a n is also written sometime it is s o a n as such sohan culture now this culture was quite interesting one now why this is interesting because a lot many differences was seen in this culture now what were the first difference now tools were not made of quartzite because if we talk about the uh, period in which the paleolithic period especially in the lower paleolithic one stone was primarily used and that was quartzite stone now quartzite stones were mainly the things by which the stone tools were made now here basically the people used pebbles why they use pebbles because the sohan valley which is situated in pakistan right now sohan valley is not in india at present day it is in pakistan it's a river valley and as it is a river valley we tend to find a lot of pebbles out there now the people what they did was they used to make the earliest type of crudish tools out of this right so out of pebble they used to make that and their type of pebble that the tools that they used to make it was called chopper chopping pebble tools it was called chopper chopping pebble tools right so from here uh, we have got this type of so the second type of culture that we see is obviously the chopper chopping pebble tool culture which was there now when we talk about the other thing now the other one is the third one and it is called acilian culture acilian culture now one thing is there when we uh, when we say acilian now the term itself looks foreign right it doesn't seems like like so an or madrasian it doesn't seem an indian word as such and you are absolutely right now this term has been given for a name because mount acil is a paleolithic site in france right so hear me carefully mount asiul is a site in france and it's a paleolithic site and the same type of tools which have been found from mount asiul in france they were found in india as well from the malwa region the narmada valley region the rajasthan regions and other regions right and these due to the similarity of the tools this culture has been named as the acilian culture right so this is acilian culture and we this is the third 
culture that developed during the lower Paleolithic era. Now, let's talk the general feature during the lower Paleolithic era. At that time, we were into Pleistocene era. Now, when I use the term Pleistocene, now again you would be confused what sort of term you are using, sir. What is Pleistocene? Now, Pleistocene is basically, we divide the clock of the earth or the phases of the earth into two parts. One is called the Pleistocene, that is glaciation era. And the second is the Holocene, which is the latest era in which we are in. Right? So, this is Pleistocene era. We also have Azoic era. We also have Jurassic era. But we will only confine ourselves because in Jurassic time, uh, uh, we are not, uh, the humans haven't developed much. So, uh, we are just concerned with Pleistocene and Holocene, right? Now, when we talk about Pleistocene era, it is the glaciation phase and this, in this phase, the glaciation phase, this lower Paleolithic era developed. Now, obviously the tools, what is the speciality of tools at this point of time? The tools were very crude in nature. Now, how they were crude? That means they will simply take a stone, right, and just dash it to the ground or to a stone. Now, that will break, break into pieces and that pieces were used as tools. This was the phenomena of making hand axe or basically the chopper chopping pebble tools or the acerulean tools that we have found right so this is a brief uh, you know uh, things about the lower paleolithic period as such now human developed and when we developed we developed from here to a next phase now one question can be coming into your mind and that is how from when human development started it is said to be about 5 million BC the human evolution started from 5 million BC and the tool making basically started from 250,000 years BC from 250,000 as per the NCRT the tool making started and it continued till 50,000 and it varies from one reason to the other because the 5 million or 2.5 uh, million what we take is basically the time period which is given for African origin and it differs in case of India and other places that's why you will see different era being given in different books about it, right? Now, after lower Paleolithic, the humans further evolved and they ventured into the middle Paleolithic era. ठीक है इतना इतना